Hi, everybody. So today we're going to continue our search for freedom with social studies by learning about another really important person that was working to end slavery, and that is Samuel Cornish. So Samuel Cornish was born in Delaware in 1795. To give you a sense, that was after the Revolutionary War had ended. So America was independent from England. However, it was before the Civil War. So slavery was still very much a part of America. He was raised in Philadelphia and New York, and he was actually living in New York when slavery was abolished there, but it was still very much happening in um, other states. However, both of his parents were free, so he himself was born free. So he was not a slave, but he worked very hard towards the abolition of slavery. After he graduated from the Free African School, he began training to be a Presbyterian minister. And when he came to New York City, he actually organized the first Black Presbyterian church in Manhattan. So that was one of the first big things he did. So he created the first church for Black people in Manhattan in, under the Presbyterian faith. One of the things that he is most remembered for is his work as a journalist and an editor. He founded the first African-American owned and operated newspaper in the United States called Freedom's Journal. So at this time period, there were newspapers in the United States, but they were all owned and operated by white people. And so he and many, including his partner, John Russworm, really felt like the black community was not being properly portrayed in an unbiased way in the media that currently existed. So they created Freedom's Journal. One of the quotes that I found that he said in one of their first newspapers was, we wish to plead our own cause. Too long have others spoken for us. Too long have the public been deceived by misrepresentations in things that concern us dearly. So they felt very strongly like the white people that were controlling the media at the time were speaking for them and they wanted to be able to speak for themselves, hence the creation of this newspaper. They felt like they could produce the news without a bias against African Americans. So it was actually founded the year that slavery was abolished in New York State. It was circulated through 11 states, so not just in New York, and it really had two purposes, just like all newspapers do, to entertain people and to sort of let them know what was going on in their community, and then also to educate them on the news. It did specifically focus on denouncing slavery and advocating for Black people's political rights and also just providing the news and happenings that were going on. But in addition to that, it had biographies of renowned Black people. It talked about Black people's marriages and the births of babies and those kind of announcements because those kind of things were not being included in other newspapers. And other just important occurrences that were happening in the Black community that weren't being reported otherwise. By the time the Civil War did start, there were over 40 Black owned and operated newspapers. So his was the first, and after that, many more began to pop up. So really important that he was able to start this first one because it was the lead for many others that would come after it. He also was a leader at the New York African Free School, where he really encouraged parents to send their children to school. He felt very strongly about that. And what he discovered by going out into the Black community and talking to people was that it wasn't really a lack of interest as to why Black people were not sending their kids to school, but really it had to do with the poverty that they were experiencing. And we've talked a little bit about how at this time it wasn't uncommon for kids to work instead of going to school. It was the same case here. A lot of families were so poor that they felt they could not send their kids to school and miss out on the money that the kids would be making by working. In other cases, parents were willing, but they just lacked the logistical resources to send their kids. Like for example, the kids didn't have warm enough clothing to walk to school. So he really tried to sort of solve some of those issues for families so that more families were able to send their kids to school, specifically this school that he was a leader at. So looking back, some of his major contributions um, he's like we said, he started the first Black Presbyterian church and he started the first African American owned and operated newspaper. He really used his position as an editor and a journalist at the newspaper he started and then other subsequent newspapers that he worked at 
to inform the public on the issues that were surrounding the abolition of slavery um, or the ending of slavery and other issues that were affecting the black community that he really didn't feel like were out there in other newspapers. He worked to get black children into schools and he was also a founding member of many different societies, including America's Anti-Slavery Society and just other organizations that were designed to help causes related to anti-slavery and reform. So he was very involved in trying to end slavery, not just not in New York necessarily, but in other parts of the country.